Quiet, please. Quiet, please. American Broadcasting Company presents Quiet, Please, which is written and directed by Willis Cooper, which features Ernest Chappell. Quiet, Please, for today is called The Evening and the Morning. They're all gone now, aren't they? That was the last car going out the gate, wasn't it? There's nobody there but the grave diggers. Can we walk over there for a minute, please? It's getting dark, isn't it? Is that what's bothering you? There isn't anything here that'll hurt you. My grandfather always taught me not to be afraid of cemeteries. They're sad places, he always said. They're sad and they're lonesome. But there's nothing there to harm you. I'll only be a minute, really. I, I'm not going to break down or anything like that. It's There's something I have to do. No, I won't run away. You're not worried about that, are you? Well, after all, you've got a gun. You could shoot me if I tried to run away. I couldn't very well attack you suddenly, could I? Not with these handcuffs. Of course not. So let's walk over there for just a minute. Please? Don't you think you're overdoing it a little bit, Dean? Well, I'm sorry if you think so. I do think so. Please, may we walk over to the grave? Listen here. You don't have to impress me, you know. I was good enough to bring you out here and take the responsibility for you. And I'm very grateful to you for that, Mr. Thorpe. You know, if some of her friends had seen you here, you'd have stood a good chance of getting lynched. I know that. I was sympathetic, and I listened to you. It was against my better judgment that I brought you out here. I'm more than grateful, Mr. Thorpe. If I could have come out here alone, I would have. We haven't started letting confessed murderers run around loose yet, especially to attend the funerals of the people they've killed. May we walk over to the grave, please? Oh, come on. Thank you. You're not doing yourself any good this way, Dean. I'm not trying to, Mr. Thorpe. What do you want to see the grave for? How can you stand looking at it? Haven't you got any heart at all? I killed her, didn't I? They won't have any trouble hanging you for it. I expect that. Well, what do you want, then? Why do you... This isn't easy, Mr. Thorpe. It, it was hard enough doing what I did. And coming out here... Well, it has to be done. I don't know what you're talking about. I... I loved Alice, Mr. Thorpe. You did? I did. And you murdered her. Here, where are you going? A uh, flower, that's all. I want a flower from her grave. that back. No. No, I won't put it back, Mr. Thorpe. I tell you... No, please don't ask me to put it back. This, this is a very precious thing, this flower. What are you talking about? Why, this is... This is why I murdered Alice, Mr. Thorpe. It's very good of you to walk back with me instead of riding really a great favor, Mr. Thorpe, and well, I might as well tell you it's... Well, I would have insisted on walking if you hadn't agreed so readily. Insisted. You see, if you hadn't consented, I'd have just stayed there. And it would have been awkward for you because I... I think I'm stronger than you and I could have resisted you. I don't believe you would have used your gun. Even if you had threatened me, I wouldn't have moved. So I'm very grateful to you, because it's important for me to walk back. It's the last walk in the open air you're likely to have. Yes, I suppose it is. You're a strange character, Dean. Well, you're rather unusual yourself, sir, walking peacefully down a dark road with a murderer all alone. You may not have noticed that I've got my hand in my coat pocket. So you have. And in my coat pocket is a gun. Of course. 
So let's not get any ideas because I've been stupid enough to humor you a little. I have no intention of trying to escape. Thank you. Did you ever walk along the cemetery road before? No. I have. I know every inch of it. Morbid. No. The first time was with Alice. The woman you killed? Yes. I walked back with her from her husband's funeral a year ago. So now you're walking back from hers. Did you kill him, too? Why, no. Don't you remember? He was killed in a motor accident. Oh, yes. Francis, that was his name. Francis. Yes. Were you, uh, in love with Alice then? I think I've always been in love with Alice. I see. But Alice loved Francis. I begin to see a motive now. Motive? For murdering her. She was still in love with her husband. She wouldn't have you, so you killed her. No. What? No, that wasn't my motive. What was then? I remember walking along this same road, Alice and I, a year ago. Just a year ago, day before yesterday. It was the same kind of evening, too. Cold and misty. Threatening snow like it is now. We'd stayed there at the cemetery after everybody else had gone. Alice and I. And now we were coming back home. Francis would have liked the flowers, wouldn't he, Dean? Yes. So many, many flowers. Such beautiful ones. So bright and lovely. And the cold rain on them. And pretty soon the snow. Alice. Francis and the flowers. All alone. Let's go back for a little while, can't we? No, we, we mustn't do that, Alice, dear. It, just come to me, Tate. I'm alone. I, I, all this time I've thought I... I mean, I couldn't help thinking that it's some ghastly joke. That Francis isn't really dead. It's a dream, maybe. Now, oh, dear, he is dead. And I'm alone. Alice, dear, don't. We've got to face it, you. But Francis. Francis is dead. All I've got left is a flower from his grave. Alice, you're not alone. I'm... Well, I know I'm not... I... But you're not alone while I'm... Alice, you're not alone. Look, Dean. The little yellow flower. The little yellow moss rose that Francis always loved so much. He was born and he lived and he loved me and I loved him and... Now there's nothing left but this. Alice, will you listen to me? <laughs> Alice, will you stop this? It's no good carrying home a flower from from there. Why, it's just a little symbol that'll break your heart all over again every time you look at it. But, but it was from you. No, don't say it. Don't carry home any reminders from that place, dear. I know this is hard, but now is the time for you to make decisions now and not years from now when you should be forgetting. That little rose, it'll always remind you. It'll always hurt you. It'll do terrible things to you, Alice. Throw it away. Throw away Francis' flower? It isn't his flower, Alice. But I... I need something 